my name is Peter Abi, and uh, I'm employed here at the Serum Institute, but I'm really working in West Africa, in Guinea-Bissau. We have very fixed ideas of what's good, and we implement those, and very often without sort of checking whether we are doing the right things. Everyone thinks that vaccines do only the thing they are planned to do. The you know, TB vaccine prevents TB, whooping cough vaccine prevents whooping cough, and measles vaccine prevents measles. But that's actually not the case. We are, <clears throat> the vaccines are also affecting your susceptibility to other infections in general. And that may have major beneficial effects, but it may also have a negative effect. And we don't have a place in... <clears throat> our system is not set up to allow for the possibility that we might be wrong. We assume that we are right. We are only measuring what we think is relevant, and we don't see, look at the total effect. Vaccinations and some of the vitamins are the most effective interventions. And we have been able to show both in Guinea-Bissau, but also in Denmark, that those who are smallpox vaccination actually had a much stronger health. They are less likely to die in Guinea-Bissau. They are less likely to die in Denmark. They're also less likely to be hospitalized. So what we are doing in low-income countries is to try to make sure that we get the full picture. And in a sense, we should, the global health should <clears throat> sort of push much more forward that global health is about understanding the full effect of our intervention, not just roll out all the invent interventions that we think. You know, the next 10 to 20 years are going to see a large number of new vaccines being introduced and probably other interventions as well, but they will only have been tested for their specific effect. So we may not actually know the full implications of these vaccines. It's not very easy to tell someone who believes that they're doing a lot of good that you might actually not be doing a lot of good. So we should all sort of have, we should create a situation where people understand that we need to check ourselves. A, a health system where you do not, do not allow for the possibility that you might have been wrong is not a good health system. Because some, it may, may have been right when it was started, but something else may happen. Once we have introduced something, we believe it continues to have the same effect. But that kind of simple model where <coughs> things have a fixed, effect, fi fixed effects as if it was sort of a one-to-one -one machine doesn't exist. If you read European history, the decline in mortality started in around year 1800. Before that, cities like Copenhagen or London or other major cities in Europe, they were deficitary in terms of population. More people died in the cities than were born in the cities. It's only when you introduce variolation and smallpox vaccination in the late uh, say 1700s and 1800 that population actually increasing. So there's a major effect on smallpox vaccination on mortality. We have benefited from that development in the last 150 years, but we have stopped that vaccination. Our data suggest that smallpox vaccination had a, still have a major effect on child survival. We have also found that smallpox vaccination protects against HIV, <coughs> both in Guinea-Bissau and in Denmark. So smallpox vaccination is probably the most, so far, the best vaccine against uh, smallpox, uh, against HIV or an infection. So if you want to do one specific thing, that would be the major, most important, most effective intervention against mortality. Uh, a, a lot of movements sort of survived by renaming themselves. Sort of that general paradigm will probably exist also in 10 years, but will probably be called something else. <laughs>